everyone and welcome to our Friday show. My name is Jane Rana and I'm an investment company analyst here at Quoted Data. As always, we'll be kicking off today with a roundup of the week's biggest investment trust news before speaking to our special guests, who this week are David Conlon and Joanne Fisk of GCP Asset Backed Income. If you've got any questions for them or for any other topics mentioned today, uh, you can use the Q&A box or email me at jr at martinandco.com. So this week we'll be looking at the sector's two music royalty funds, Roundhill Music and Hypnosis, Oxpus Renewables Infrastructure, and there's a, co a few fundraising stories from Hickel Infrastructure, Impact Healthcare Route and Digital Nine. So firstly, a development in the music industry that has impacted both Round Hill Music Royalty and Hypnosis Songs Fund. So the US Copyright Royalty Board has rejected an appeal from a number of streaming services, so Spotify, Deezer, etc., um, against its plans to increase the mechanical streaming royalty rates for songwriters and publishers. So they'll receive an increased rate of just over 15%. This was previously 10.5% and it will actually be backdated to the 1st of January of this year. Additionally, both Roundhill and Hypnosis will also have some previously withheld funds paid. The streaming services have been told of the changes and that they have six months to pay, which they've actually asked for an extension for, uh, but a decision on that has not yet been made. So uh, Roundhill Music, which owns a whole range of catalogues from Pearl Jam to Foreigners Dennis Elliott and Alison Chains have not surprisingly applauded the news. The CEO said the trust was delighted to see the appeal overturned and that this starts to tackle the imbalance currently experienced by songwriters and publishers in the US. Negotiations for the next five year period have started and songwriters have, ask, have asked for another increase to 20%, which Roundhill is also supporting. Similarly, Hypnosis' CEO also supports the decision, acknowledging that the songwriter who is the most important component in the business is actually the lowest paid person. He said that there is still room for improvement, but that this was an important step to recognising the value that songwriters bring to the industry. So if we just look at the, the two trusts over the past 12 months, you can see um, there has been, been some volatility, especially earlier this year. Um, Hypnosis said this week that the extra revenue from the decision was already reflected in its NAV, but had been allocated to the capital account rather than to the revenue account pending the outcome of this decision. Uh, Roundhill hasn't actually clarified its position, but we expect a similar story from them. So as, as I mentioned, both fund share prices have lagged their NAVs over the past few months. It's not obvious why, but we wonder if people are expecting that revenue from streaming services such as Spotify has been falling uh, in a similar way to, to revenue from TV subscription services such as Netflix. Spotify uh, is actually announcing their figures later this month, so that will either confirm or counter that. But either way, because of the long lag between the funds earning revenues and being paid, the time it takes to bed in new catalogue acquisitions and extra revenue from the copyright board, we expect some revenue uplift for, for both funds. So next up, we have Octopus Renewables Infrastructure Trust, which announced earlier this week plans to seek shareholder approval to invest more in offshore wind farms. So the trust wants to amend its investment policy so that offshore wind farms are included in its core investment focus. At the moment, they, set it, they sit in the non-core technology allocation, which is currently limited to 20% of gross asset value. This change, if approved, will see offshore wind farms move to the core allocation of the portfolio, which already includes onshore wind farms and solar PV parks. Uh, this is expected to make up just under 60% of the total value of all investments over the long term, so a big difference there. The Trust is holding a general meeting to seek shareholder approval at the end of the month and says that the changes will allow it greater flexibility to make additional offshore wind farm investments as part of its diversified portfolio. So again, just taking a look at performance over the past year, uh, there's been a steady incline in its NAV, uh, while the share price has seen a bit of volatility, but it's still slightly higher than where it was a year ago. Um, it's also been trading on a pretty consistent premium, which has even gone into double digits over the past year. It's probably worth mentioning as well that the trust, which only launched in December 2019, uh, is already 600 million in size 
and has a diversified portfolio, including 23 solar PV assets, seven onshore wind assets, and one offshore wind investment. The board said uh, now is the ideal time to make this amendment to allow investors the opportunity to access an even broader, more diversified range of investments in renewable generation technologies. So finally, um, just a few fundraising stories. So this morning, Kickle Infrastructure announced plans to raise additional capital through an issue uh, by way of a non-preemptive tap issuance at an issue price of 169 pence per share. This represents a 3.1% discount to the mid-market closing share price uh, from yesterday and a premium of 4.9% to the last peer reported ex-dividend NAV at the end of March. Private investors can also take part in, in the retail offer through the primary bid app. And the trust has said that the net proceeds will be used to restore its revolving credit facility capacity and to provide additional resources to pursue its near term pipeline. Uh, now we have a couple of uh, completed fundraisers. So firstly, Impact Healthcare Re raised 22 million in a placing and offer for subscription, uh, which was confirmed earlier this week. The group said the proceeds would be used with existing resources, which includes 70 million pounds of debt to acquire a pipeline of care home investments. It's also in advanced negotiations to acquire six portfolios consisting of 27 separate care homes for a total of 169 million pounds. The chairman said proceeds of this fundraise will allow the company to progress its acquisition pipeline, as well as allowing further scope to invest into additional accretive asset management initiatives. And finally, we have Digital Nine Infrastructure, which also announced today that it raised 660 million via a placing and offer for subscription. Once again, as has been the case with all of this trust fundraisers since launch, um, it said that the offer for subscription was significantly oversubscribed and that a scaling back exercise was undertaken. So the proceeds of this issue uh, are to be used to fund expansion opportunities, as well as potential future acquisitions um, in combination with the current 300 million revolving credit facility that it has. So commenting on, on this news, the chairman said, we have built a high quality and differentiated portfolio of businesses with predictable and contracted cash flows with high inflation protection. So that's uh, the news for the week.